In this video, we're going to look at the titration of a strong base with a strong acid. So a strong base is going to be uh, a hydroxide molecule, typically with a group one ion. So when we're talking about a strong base, we usually mean sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, or potassium hydroxide. Um, the strong acid uh, is going to be any of our monoprotic strong acids, so perchloric acid, uh, nitric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydrochloric acid. When we say the titration of a strong base with a strong acid, what we mean is that the acid is the titrant, so we are adding the acid, and the base is our sample or analyte, and it's in our flask. We'll talk about indicators, um, but what you see here is uh, an indicator uh, close to the endpoint where we have some color change happening. We're going to look at the titration of 10 milliliters of 0.1 mole per liter sodium hydroxide with 0.1 mole per liter uh, nitric acid. So our sodium hydroxide is our sample and it's an ionic compound that will dissociate into sodium and hydroxide. Um, and the nitric acid will ionize because it's a strong acid into hydronium and nitrate. The uh, net ionic equation for this reaction is going to be between the hydroxide and the hydronium. So the net ionic equation is going to be hydroxide as our base plus hydronium as our acid forming water. And the OH is our sample, the H3O is our titrant. So we're going to walk through this titration curve starting at when we just have our sample present all the way through to when we basically just have titrant present. So we'll start at zero volume. So this is before any of our titrant has been added. So at this point in our flask, we're just going to have our dissociated sodium and hydroxide ions and water. The pH at this point is going to be determined entirely by the concentration of the hydroxide. And so a concentration of 0.1 mole per liter hydroxide gives us a pH of 13. As we begin to titrate, we'll see the pH will stay steady and then quickly drop then it will level out at a low pH. This is because we're starting with a base. As we react it, we decrease the concentration of the base, and then we keep adding an acid, and we increase the concentration of the acid. So we're gonna look at four points on this reaction. So we've done one. We're now going to look at something called the half equivalence point. So this is half of the volume needed to get to our equivalence point. At the half equivalence point, we've started this reaction. So we've used up about half of the OH that we've started with by adding half as much H3O as we need to react all of our hydroxide. So we're going to have sodium present. We'll still have some hydroxide, but less. Uh, we'll have water. And we'll now have nitrate from our titrant. We will not have any H3O, because before our equivalence point, the limiting reagent is hydronium, and it's going to react the second it's added. The excess reagent is hydroxide. So there's going to be more of it than we need. So this is our titrant, and this is our sample. Next up, we're going to look at our equivalence point. So our equivalence point 
is at 10 milliliters. And the reason for this is we have equal concentrations of acid and base. And so we need equal moles for our equivalence point. Since we have 10 mils of base, we need 10 mils of acid. At our equivalence point, we are going to have uh, no hydroxide and no hydronium left. So just the products of our reaction and our spectator ions. So we will have water, sodium, and nitrate. Water, sodium, and nitrate are all neutral species. None of them have a pH um, above or below 7. So that is why the pH at our equivalence point is also 7. Uh, next up, we're going to look at just past our equivalence point. At this point, we've now added more acid than we needed to react with the initial base. So at this point, at the equivalence point, we, we've used up all of the base in our sample. So now we're adding extra acid. So at this point in the titration, we're going to have sodium from our sodium hydroxide. We'll have water, which was the product of our reaction. We will have nitrate. And now we'll have excess hydronium. So our pH, that's why our pH is going to drop down. Um, after the equivalence point, the limiting reagent becomes our sample. So the hydroxide is our limiting reagent and our excess reagent is our titrant. So this is the general outline of in a strong base titrated with a strong acid. Um, in terms of a, an, an indicator, uh, we can find indicators on page 10 in your data booklet. Uh, we want to choose an indicator that's going to change color as close as possible to our equivalence point. So as close as possible to a pH of 7. A common indicator that's used is uh, phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein changes color at 8.2. So as we were to titrate in, if we used phenolphthalein, as we added, we would see a color transition from pink to colorless. So pink above pH of 8.2, colorless below a pH of 8.2. Another option for our indicator would be uh, bromothymol blue, which would be blue uh, just above our equivalence point at pH 7.6. It would be green over our equivalence point down to a pH of 6, and then it would be yellow. And so bromothymol blue would see that color change from blue to green to yellow. And so we would have two endpoints we could use to uh, determine our equivalence point.